Almost a week. Busy. School and everything. Busy, busy, busy. Even the week, uh, Saturday, I was in school for three hours. <laughs> the quiet list is so good that you're getting something accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. After the last uh, session, how did you feel? Mm. I felt, <laughs> I, um, at the end of the session, I felt relieved. Mm. You know, and, that, and that, I still felt that way even when I went home. You know, mm. um, I kind of laughed because I didn't, I didn't think that I would feel all that stuff I was feeling. You know, it was, but uh, I felt relieved. You know. Um, Glad I got some of that out. Mm. You know, it, it, it didn't bother me every day, mm. but thinking about it, and you know, I don't know exactly how this works, but it, something came out. You know, and it felt good that it did come out. You know, um, and I felt the way when I went home. You know, mm. uh, definitely better. Yeah, you know. and during the rest of the week, uh, how did you feel? Um, I felt better, you know, um, mm. it's a good thing that I have this on Mondays, mm. you know, because it, it gives me the whole week to, f you know, find out how I feel, yeah. you know, and mm. um, I feel better, you know, uh, yeah, I felt, I felt better for the most part. Any dreams, nightmares? No. Did you have any kind of flashbacks, like, you know, the images popping into your mind? Um, I had a few when we were talking about, I actually seen hmm. the person who, you know, shot me. Hmm. That went through my head a few times. But when I, when I, when it went through my head, you know, I didn't feel anger or anything hmm. like that, you know. Um, it was, it just, you know, flashed in my mind. Uh, hmm. For a few seconds, then it just went away. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead and take the pulses. <coughs> yeah, please go ahead and uh, uh, access the memories of that. You know, if you want to remove your shoes, you know, please go ahead and feel free. Oh, no, I'm good today. Yeah. Not hurting too bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Let's uh, uh, have you today uh, access the memories of the getting shot by the sniper. Since that stuff came up the last session, let's continue with that. Okay. Yeah. Just access the memories of that.
from all the images that you have, select one snapshot picture that is the most disturbing image now. The most disturbing is actually me seeing my own leg because I didn't think that I even had a leg anymore because um, when I went down, hmm. uh, I remember looking down at my leg and since the bullet shattered my femur hmm. and um, my TC, he dragged me for a few feet. He said I was blacked out at this time. Hmm. I remember looking down at my leg and it was twisted like three times and I didn't feel any pain. All I could feel was this tingling, like my whole leg, I fallen asleep. It felt like that, but multiplied by like a hundred. You know, it didn't it didn't hurt, but my mm. whole leg just tingled. So I thought I didn't even have a leg anymore. I looked down mm. and I was like, Oh my god, I don't even have a leg anymore. And so I was more frightened by that. I never thought I was gonna die. Mm. But I just thought I didn't have a leg. I thought that, you know, they would pull me and like my whole leg would just like be separated from my body because it was so much blood squirting out I couldn't even see if it was still attached when they, they had to cut my pant leg open put the tourniquets on but it was so much blood and um I remember looking down I looked down just one time and I was like man it's not even there anymore and that's that that, that was the most frightening thing you know some, you know it wasn't seeing anybody yeah. or anything like that it was just some my leg you know and right now as you hold that image in your mind what emotions are coming up for you um worry because you uh hmm. you know in some war movies they had this guy who says you know he'll say don't send me home jacked up you know i want to come in one piece that's what i was thinking you know i didn't want to die hmm. but i was like man i'm gonna go home hmm. and i'm not gonna have a leg hmm. That went through my mind. Um, not for too long, you know. Once I felt they put the tourniquets on, then I felt the pain, and I knew it was still there. Mm -hmm. But for uh, man, before uh, when I got shot, I blacked out, went down, and for for a few seconds, mm -hmm. you know, that's I thought that I had a leg, and yeah. it took about I don't even know the time, a minute. I think under a minute to put the first tourniquet on to stop the bleeding and then after that I just got this big adrenaline rush you know I just started screaming and mm. kicking and yelling you know and I was like it hurt it fucking hurt you know I was, you know I was telling how bad it hurt you mm. know and the whole time though I was trying to look at in the direction I got shot from to try to see mm. whoever where we came from mm. you know and um my TC and I we kind of knew what was set up because before we got to the corner and, put, and started pulling security he said hey the ips aren't here and the ip ip stand for uh, iraqi police mm. and he was like the ip truck isn't there because mm. it's usually on a corner every day mm. and you know he just said well keep your eyes peeled and you know it's just you knew something was up that mm. day because it was a it was a normal day but the ips weren't there mm. And even when I got shot, everybody was walking around like it was a normal day, hmm. you know. And you know, uh, over there, if you tell, you might, you know, they might execute you or yeah. your family, you know. But um, I'm just worried, you know, about me not having a leg. Hmm. Um, if we're right now on a ten point scale, how upset are you bringing up this memory? Now that. And I thought about this last week too. Now I, it, it finally got out mm. about all that anger. I'm not really mad about it now. Mm. You know, I don't know what happened last week. But you know, I just had to picture somebody who shot me. Yeah. Me taking them out. Now I'm not that angry about it okay. anymore. You know, because you know, like mm. I said last week, it didn't really happen. Yeah. In my mind, I got revenge on yeah. somebody. You know. Yeah. Um, and it was a person who shot me. You know. Um, Therefore, today. On a ten point scale, where would you put it? It's, I would say, right now it's a zero. Right now, really? Yeah, because it's just last week. It felt so good to actually mm. do something, even though it was in my mind. Yeah, it felt. It just felt good to actually know that I did something. You know, um, 
I know, I know that, I think I told you, you know, I always used to think about, move, what if I would have moved this direction, that direction, yeah. you know, it happened, you know, it happened a few years ago now, but I never, I don't know what it was about this either, but I never was able to put a face on anything yeah. and actually do anything about it, but last week, it felt like such a big relief, you know, like, uh, like a big load off. You know, um, excellent. Cause that, yeah, yeah, excellent. That anger came out of nowhere, and it almost yeah. it kind of scared me because I was like, "Why am I getting so mad right now?" You know, and um, I just didn't understand. And um, when I finally, you know, processed in my mm-hmm. mind that you know I was doing something actually against the person who hurt me, you know, it felt it felt good. Yeah. Therefore, to pray, I would like you to just close your eyes and imagine that you are watching a DVD recording of that entire incident mm-hmm. until you were safely medevaced, you know? Okay. okay, just close your eyes and watch the entire video.
one thing that sticks out about the whole interview, mm. yeah. two things actually. Mm. Um, the sound of the rifle mm. before I got shot, and the second is <laughs> uh, I remember going to the ground, and the last thing I did was scream. I remember going, ah! You know, God, it happened so quick, I heard this sound. Mm. Now, the actual bullet going through my leg, I didn't feel that at all. I just remember my leg, I just remember falling. Mm. And it's kind of one of them things where I knew something happened, but I just didn't know what had happened yet. Mm. Because I didn't feel any pain until, you know, it came back too. Mm. And even when it was working on my leg, I didn't feel any pain. I just felt that tingle. But when the tourniquets were on, that's when mm. I felt the pain. But what was happening the first few times, it was doing, it was looping again. And it mm. would go until until um, I heard the sound. Because, like, with the um, explosion, that was the most, uh, I don't know, if the you know, more definitive thing. Mm. During those two events, this time it was the, the crack of the rifle because... You know, it's just one of them things that I'll never forget. Like, just like seeing my first ID, I'll never forget that sound. Mm. And the crack of that rifle, um, it's, you can't, I wouldn't make mistake that for any other noise in the world. Mm. You know, when I got shot, when I was in the hospital, it was the 4th of July, and it was, they asked me where I wasn't going to be okay, and I said, yeah, you know, because I don't think I'll ever hear anything that sounds like that mm. rifle again. You know, I don't... It, it really sounds like, and still, when it goes to my mind, mm. it, it sounds like somebody put a gun like right next to my ear and pulled mm. the trigger. You know, that's how loud it was. And um, going through it again and again and again, <sighs> even now, I feel I had this big energy rush, you know, yeah. and now describing it, you know, I still feel it. Yeah. Um, Because as I got shot, I was screaming. You know, I was like, they tried to kill me. I was like, I, I don't know mm. why, you know. They said it was because of the blood loss. Or I may have been in shock, but I was like, mm. they tried to kill me. They tried to kill me. You know, I was real loud, and, you know. And um, they didn't know I got shot in my right leg. Mm. And I put my hand there because I felt something there. And I looked, and it was bleeding. I was like, right here, right here, right here, you know. And I let them know it was right, uh, um, bleeding right here. Mm. And they cut that open, and um, that's when I felt the pain. I felt it. When I looked at it, it didn't look nowhere near as bad as my left leg, but it was just through and through. Um, and they the, put it the, the shot went through both your legs. Well, they mm. see um, either that happened or I got shot twice because my mm. TC said he jumped on top of my body mm. and he got shot twice also. Oh. So what happened? Mm. I got shot by a sniper. We got, it was an ambush, mm. so I got shot by the sniper. And um, they said, my TC said, mm. two guys drove by in cars and they shot AKs at us. And he mm. got shot twice. And mm. he said, I may have got shot again that way or the bullet may have went through both my legs. Mm. But this one, mm. it uh, went through here and came out here. Mm. It didn't really, it didn't hit any arteries, nothing like that. Mm. It just um, went through and through. Yeah. And I just remember being, you know, I had this big adrenaline rush. Mm. And I was like, man, I was like, don't let me die. Don't let mm. me die. And my friend came up screaming because he thought I was dead. Because <laughs> uh, I, I was just laying there for a while, laying there. And one thing, another thing I remember, it was so hot. The ground, it was um, June. Mm. And it was so hot. And um, I looked up at him. I said, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Just mm. shut up. Because I thought we was I thought he was going to come back around and shoot at us again. Mm. So I was like, shut up, shut up, you know. Mm. <laughs> and um, they put me in a vehicle on the stretcher, and my first sergeant, he was making sure that I was alive. Mm. And, I did, and it, the energy went away. Mm. And this one, I was scared. I felt really sleepy. Mm. I, I, I was like, I just want to take a nap. I just want to go to sleep. And he was like, no, you got to stay awake. You got to stay awake. Man, uh, I guess after it set in, Oh man, um, I was just really sleepy, and I was like, I just want to close my eyes for a few seconds. Like that's all I want to do. And you know, he made sure he talked to me the whole time. And he was putting water on my lips. Um, I remember 
they let off a few rounds, like, above traffic mm-hmm. so they can clear the path so I can get to yeah. the hospital. When I got to the hospital, the cash, they, um, I remember me and my TC, they put us both on tables, and they started cleaning our wounds out. Mm-hmm. And I heard him scream at first. And I was like, oh, man, what was he screaming for? And then mm-hmm. as soon as I said that, I felt this burning, and that's when they cleaned the mine out. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man. I, mean, I said, I need morphine. I need mm-hmm. morphine. So the tourniquets are really starting to hurt. Mm-hmm. And at this time, my heart's going like a thousand miles an hour. And, mm-hmm. and I, was, I, I was telling them, I need morphine. I need morphine. I need morphine. And I got that. And then things went real slow. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a black hawk came. We got me and my TC. Got to the black hawk. And then this is when things started to get really fuzzy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't remember how long the ride yeah. was. It couldn't have been any more than two minutes. Mm-hmm. And we got to the actual hospital. And um, it, things just started getting really fuzzy and slow. I guess mm-hmm. the morphine started to set in. Yeah. I remember they put both of us on the operating table. And it was getting our vital signs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember they took... Uh, they took the two, I had two tourniquets on my left leg. They mm. took those off and they slapped this big tourniquet on it. And that was the last thing I remember. Mm. And the next day, I don't know if it was, I think it was the next day, I woke up and I had these rods sticking out of my leg. I think they called it a fixator or something like that. And then my platoon came to visit me. Well, first thing I remember, um, I got my Purple Heart from my commander, from my uh, squadron mm. commander. And my uh, sergeant major. Mm. And then things got fuzzy again. And I was trying to figure out where I was and what was sticking out of my leg. I had four mm. rods sticking out of my leg here. Mm. And I was like, man, like, where am I? What happened? You know, I remember I got shot, but I didn't know where I got sent to. And I thought I was in a hospital with, um, I thought I was in an Iraqi hospital because it was Iraqis all around me. Yeah. And uh, my platoon came to visit me. I remember my two best friends coming to visit me. And then uh, he wasn't my TC at the time, but his name was Sergeant Francis. Mm. He was uh, one of the gunners. Mm. And he gave me this look. He just looked at me with this, you know, blank stare on his mm. face. And, you know, I was like, man, you know. Mm. And... At this time, my leg was huge. It was like mm. three times the size. Mm. And I looked down at my leg, and I was like, man, you know, I'm really lucky right now. And I remember, I remember two other people coming to visit me. Hall, uh, Specialist Hall had brought me some Burger King, mm. and uh, another NCO brought me some pizza. But at this time, it, everything, I don't remember a lot after that because of the surgeries and the morphine and things mm. like that. But the whole incident, when I was in the, uh, still in the danger zone, I just had this big rush of adrenaline. And then it went away. And when I was arrived with the first sergeant, um, that's when I felt, I didn't think I was going to die, but I was like, man, I don't like this feeling that I have right now. And I was like, I just want to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. And um, therefore, right now, David, what do you notice in your body? It's I notice it's like a real heavy feeling, you know. Mm. Um, even though I know I'm okay, it's like yeah. sad, like to yeah. relive it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I just want you to stay with that. Okay, and this time, track the lights, and just let whatever comes up, let it come up.
and what's coming up now, David? Um, the feeling where I was helpless. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't a good feeling. Hmm. Um, Did that come up now? I guess it's the results after I got hurt because I wasn't able to do nothing for myself. Mm. It went um, all of the uh, it's, it's it's combination of being mad and sad, you know, because <clears throat> I was in the hospital for so long and I was just sitting there. Couldn't do nothing for myself. Hmm. It was sad, you know, and I was mad, you know, like why did this happen to me? What did I do? I know, I know, it was war and everything, but man, just sad feeling, you know. And sometimes I still feel that today because, you know, I can't do everything I used to do. Yeah. Um, it's a sad feeling. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and uh, right now, where is it in your body, David? It's everything I feel. Hmm. It's always in my chest. It's always okay. in my chest. You know, it's like I don't want to say my heart. You know, yeah. but it, 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 that's what I feel like it's at. Yeah. yeah. You hmm. know, um, okay. it just you just go ahead and close your eyes mm -hmm. and shift your attention into your chest, where that sadness is. Just stay with it. Just let your body know that it can bring up anything else that is there, anything else that needs to be processed. Any other traumatic memory that is still trapped in your body from that incident. And what's coming up, David? Hmm. That sadness. Uh, and going from the hospital to physical therapy. Hmm. Not being able to do nothing for myself. Um, if I wear... Uh, back then... I used to be real self-conscious about the scars that I had. And so I didn't want anybody asking me any questions what happened. So, you know, I remember a few times I used to, I wore shorts hmm. and people would stare and I hate that. Yeah. Um, it made me feel like I was different, you know. Hmm. And even though I shouldn't feel that way, I remember going to the gym and it was a couple, and they was they were just staring, staring, staring at it, at my leg, you know. And I'd rather I would have rather them just say, "Hey, what happened to your leg?" But they just kept staring at it, mm. staring at it, and staring at it. It made me feel like like I wasn't a human or something the way they mm. was looking at it, you know. And they were, I heard them talking about it, you know, and you know, it's it's. It was like they was almost, I don't know, stereotyping me or something like that, you know. <sighs> um, I was feeling self-conscious, you know. I didn't, I didn't want nobody to see him, you know. Um, and what sensations do you notice in your body now? Like, it's... It's still it's, it's sad. I want I wanted to separate myself from everybody. You know, it was kind of hmm. I was depressed depressed because of that. You yeah. know, because after I got hurt, my friends got back. 
I couldn't go back to living a normal life that we did before we deployed. They did. All I could do was sit back and watch it. I mean, mm-hmm. that. I didn't expect them to stop their lives because I got hurt, but that. I was really depressed because of that. Um, to see all my friends come back and, you know, not be able to do what they were doing, you know, go to, we used to go play (coughs) basketball, you know, I'm not able to do that anymore, you know, play football, you know, I just sit on the side, you know, and watch them, you know, like, use their legs like normal, you know, I can't do that no more, you know, I wasn't, I can't do that now, um, I was sad, you know. I wouldn't nobody see it, but I would go to my room and like pout and mope around, you know, s- cry a little bit, cause I couldn't do that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there was that sense of loss, you know. Mhm. Yeah. And even now, you know, I'm gonna go back home mm. next few months here, and I see it now. The people back home. They know I got shot, but to them, I'm still, you know, the same David that they knew when I was in high school, and that's not the case at all. You know, um, a few times when I went home on leave, they would do some things, you know, play sports, and I wasn't able to do it. And, you know, I had, it reminds me of everything I went through the first time when my friends came back from Iraq. And it's gonna, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be reminded of it again because I'm going to go back and the weather's going to be warm and everybody's going to want to go outside and like play football or basketball or something, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm not, I don't, I don't I'm going to try not to feel that way, but I'm sure naturally <laughs> yeah. it's going to come. I don't know what I can do to stop it, but. You know, it was different being home because these are guys that I grew up with. Yeah. They always, we always did stuff like that, you know. And now things for me are different. Yeah. And, you know, it might take a while for them to notice that. But, you know, I can't run. <laughs> and a few times I tried to go home, I like nothing happened. And, you know, I realized how different I am now, you know. Just something simple me and my cousins was running across the street you know i started to run realized i couldn't run i was hit by a truck you know <laughs> it's just simple stuff like that you know i can't even do it anymore it's, it's gonna i don't know it feels like uh it just feels different you know it's like being around everybody yeah but you're the one person that stands out you know just because of a physical, a physical injury that I have. And how does that make you feel about yourself? <sighs> Different, you know. It makes me uh, sad because I, I'm only 22, and I know, you know, I plan to live a long life. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know how this is going to affect me in the future. You know. I don't know. I have a. I'm, I'm, I try to have a positive outlook on my life, even with this injury. But some days I just, it just, I don't have any hope at all. Like, man, it's never gonna get better. It's gonna get worse. Even if I have my own kids, I'm not gonna be able to play with them the way I want to. You know. Yeah. It, it just. I don't have the greatest outlook right now on life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just want you to stay with those thoughts and the feelings that go with it. And this time track the lights.
Take a deep breath and let it out. And what's coming up now? Okay. Going back home. And uh, how my life is going to be impacted on the civilian side. I don't think... I, I keep seeing my little sisters because mm. I play with them and I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with them when I get home, you know. They may not understand, you know, my littles, they're um, eight and six. Yeah. Two, I got two twins that are mm. eight years old and a six year old. They may not understand that I'm hurt the way I am, you mm. know, and they're going to just... I know this is all in my imagination. It, it hasn't come true yet. But just for them to be like, well, what's wrong with, you know, they call me Junior back home, you know. What's wrong with Junior? Why can't he, you know, play basketball with us or run with us, you know. Um, and I've been away from them for so long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm coming back and they, you know, I'm going to be, I'm always going to be their big brother, but just hurt now, you know. It's, and it. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with them, you know, as far as, you know, the little girls. They're going to want to play and run around, you know, in, in the field or, you know, in the backyard. And, you know, if I stand up for more than 20 minutes, you know, my leg starts to hurt. I don't know what. I don't know what the future is going to hold, you know. Um, Therefore... In terms of your physical capacity, uh, you will be limited. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, there may be certain ways to compensate for that limitation. Mm -hmm. And in certain cases, that limitation cannot be compensated. It cannot be overcome. I just hopefully they understand. You know, they know I got hurt. Yeah. yeah. They know I got hurt, but they don't know what happened. You know, mm. they know. You know, they know I'm in the army, but they don't. I don't think the army is. You know? Therefore, do you intend to, you know, kind of sit down and explain to them and? Uh, yeah, one yeah. day, you know. Yeah. And I'll do it. You know, I try to do it mm. when I get home. In a way that they'll understand. Yeah. Like you know, this is what happened. You know. Uh, you know, just try to break it down to them, you know. Yeah. In a way, they don't understand. My oldest sister, she's... My oldest sister is... Six, uh, she Well, she's 15. She'll be 16. Mm. She understands what happened. You know, yeah. she understands completely. And mm. she knows what I go through. I talk to her just mm. about every day. Um, but I want to spend time with all of them, you know. I don't have to worry about running around with a little 15-year-old sister, but for the younger girls, you know, just worry about if they're going to understand mm. and stuff like that, you know, that's it, that's all. Yeah, you, you might have to engage them in doing things that uh, does not involve you running around, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> have to do that. It's complicated, you know. I think I think too far into the future, you know. These things may not even happen, you know. Them ask me what happened, but I just <sighs> worry about, you know, how's it gonna affect my life, you know. If I wanna have kids, you know, how's it gonna affect, you know, me playing with them when they're little, you know. How are they gonna remember me, you know? Um, I just wanna be remembered as this hurt guy, you know, I'm pretty sure when I'm, you know, 25, 30, I don't know how this is going to affect me then, you know, I, I don't know, that's the only thing I worry about, you know, how is this going to affect me in the future, you know, yeah. how is my leg going to hold up, I guess, I don't know. And what, what is, uh, what are some of, what is the prognosis now in terms of, uh, what you can do and 
if this condition will get better or the worse. Thing, the only thing they do right now mm. is with the nerve damage, mm. I can't move these toes. Mm. And I have muscle atrophy. I can only move my ankle like that. Yeah. You know, uh, all the muscles up here are really weak. Mm. Um, I was going to physical therapy for two and a half years, mm. and they say, you know, just be lucky what I have. As far as down the road, they can't predict what's going to happen. That's why it was so hard for them to write my med board packet because they don't know how this will change in the future. I know uh, when the weather gets cold outside, mm. it aches. Yeah. And, um, you know, in uh, upstate New York, where I live in Rochester, uh, it be a lake effect snow and the ground becomes real damp and yeah. wet. And that. You know, it just tears my leg apart. You know, I remember I was home for Christmas back in, um, I think it was 09. Mm. It was 09, and it was snowing, and it, and it was real slush, slush on the ground. Yeah. And man, I woke up in pain, went to sleep in pain. I don't know, it's just, it's a different kind of cold than it is here. Yeah. I feel the same thing here, but when I went home that one year for Christmas, it was horrible, <laughs> you know. So you know. So you yeah, therefore, uh, are you planning to relocate to a warmer climate? Oh yeah, well, definitely. When I get older, definitely, yeah. I'm gonna have to. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go home mm. for now mm. for the summertime. But yeah. when it gets cold, I'm gonna rethink things. You know, <laughs> uh, rethink things. You know, um, uh, look for a job somewhere in a warmer state. Um, look for a school where I can continue the criminal justice programs. Um, you know, talk to my family. All my mm. family wants to leave Rochester, so they want to leave. Yeah, because uh, mm. well, everybody's leaving now because you know it's not a, it's not too good of a place to live. But that's yeah. where I'm from, so yeah. you know, I have no choice. Um, so planning to move down south, like uh, they they want to. My mom mm. wants to go to Georgia. Mm. My dad, he's stubborn. He doesn't want to go anywhere. Mm. I, I want. He, he's from South Carolina. I want yeah. to go back there. Mm. It's just it's it's so different, you know, for me down south. <laughs> it's warm. It's really yeah. warm though. Mm. It's warm. But um, I have um, see what they decide, mm. you know, because I'll go wherever. Yeah. You know, I don't have to go wherever they go, but you know, I'll go. I mean, I, I I've spent so much time away from them now. Yeah. That I want to, you know, have a closer. Mm relationship with my little sister and what do your parents do they work uh, uh my mom works in a psychiatric hospital hmm. and my dad does factory work hmm. even done that ever since i can remember just factory the, the for, work oh uh, he's uh, how old are they uh, my mom's 41 i think i'm yeah. not sure my dad's hmm. 43. they put that very young yeah yeah the for the move they have to uh, look for a uh, good uh, uh, yeah, career uh, continuity mm -hmm. yeah mm. yes your mom probably won't have any problems yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah she uh, she's mm. been working in a psychiatric mm. hospital for about 11 years now yeah a long mm. time your dad probably will have to think of a different career because there are not too many factories yeah no i don't like them doing that kind of work anyway yeah but uh, yeah i think there are some uh factory factories in georgia yeah yeah mm. have to, have to sit down and talk about it while i get home mm. <laughs> yeah yeah Yeah, the, the, for, these are some of the issues, you know, that uh, uh, eventually, you know, uh, here the, the question is that you're asking, what I hear you say is that, how much will my injury define who I, I am or who I become? Because mm -hmm. yeah. when I'm, you know, when I'm older, mm -hmm. I don't want to be in so much pain. You know, I, I I joke with everybody, mm. you know, but I, it's it's kind of serious. You know, I tell people if it hurts too bad, I just get my leg, you know, amputated. Mm. You know, because even though I know that's the extreme, mm. I don't want to. I just want to deal with this pain every day if I don't have to. Depending on what I can do, you know, I'm so 
hard headed about it. You know, I do stuff that, you know, I, even though even when it hurts, I don't I never rest. You know, I'm always doing something. Yeah. You know, I just you know I don't take too much time to just rest. I'm always on the go or always doing something. You know, and the only reason I do that is just to prove that I'm normal, yeah. like everybody. You know, feel like I gotta go above and beyond. Yeah. And and really, it's killing me. But <laughs> but I don't know. It's just stubborn that way. You know, I I I, I gotta feel like I gotta prove to everybody else that mm -hmm. I'm just. As normal as you yeah. know anybody else, yeah. by doing you know stuff that regular, you know I don't I keep saying regular I'm regular but you know yeah. well, I, mean, uh, it's, I don't know I just I don't know I I feel like when I'm older I'm you know I'm still gonna be just as stubborn and try to do all these things you know I don't know I just I just try to avoid the fact that you know really I'm disabled disabled veteran whatever you want to call us you know yeah. i don't want to be called disabled i don't want nobody to look at me and be like oh well you know you're handicapped you know yeah, no yeah. absolutely absolutely not yeah. yeah basically you know in that sense you know you have to kind of uh, uh, structure your life mm -hmm. in order to, in a way that it accommodates yeah. your incapacity yeah definitely have to yeah <laughs> Okay, David. All good, right. Good work, and I'll see you same time next week. All right. Thank you. Have a good week. Yeah. Thank you.